greetings friends today i will discuss some art forms that were discovered uh, in the mesopotamia which uh, which is which was the ancient name of the uh, iraq in the area where euphrates and tigris rivers flow so let's let's get into the video and see the uh, what type of artworks uh, were available uh, were discovered in mesopotamia so mesopotamia was this region in ancient iraq where the uh, the land were between the euphrates and tigris rivers and because this was a land between two rivers it was a very fertile area and this area is supposed to be the first cradle of human civilizations where first urban centers grew and the first civilization in mesopotamia happened in the southern part of uh, the mesopotamia region and this civilization was called sumer so today we will see some specimens of sumerian art so in this area uh, there was a fertile crescent which encompassed the entire uh, mesopotamia region you can see that this is the land between euphrates and tigris and this entire area stretching from the southern um, southern coast of iraq uh, in the persian gulf it uh, stretched uh, across assyria that is the northern part of uh, iraq and iran and it extended to south uh, to northwest where uh, where lies the modern palestine and israel so jerusalem and jericho all these cities were in this region and then it goes to the western extremity to encompass lower egypt and upper egypt so this is, area is called fertile crescent because this was a very fertile region and most of the earliest urban centers grew in this region so today we are going to study not the entire region we are going to study the art specimens from the southern part of mesopotamia so this region we are going to study and if we look at uh, an enlarged version of this southern part of mesopotamia you can see that uh, this had several cities in the ancient period which have been excavated and they have thrown up archaeological and historical documents and here uh, you can see uruk which was uh, one of the oldest urban centers and towards the southeast you can see ur so ur is was a major urban center and today we will see some specimens from ur and apart from this there is nina uruka lagash girsu this entire uh, area had uh, four urban centers and then we have ada kisura isin nippur marad bilbat barsipa and then babylon you all know babylon which was a great city in the ancient period and then kish and kutha akshak sippar and rapiko so this was the southern part of mesopotamia and we are going to see some specimens from this uh, southern part this area was highly urbanized and they had trade relations with other civilizations of their times uh, for example they traded with indus valley civilization and also with egypt and china and they also traded with what is called jerusalem jericho today so uh, and uh, since this was a highly urbanized uh, civilization they also engaged in many artisanal activities so they they did they engaged in metal work and uh, they they their artisans were killed in carving metals like gold copper bronze silver 
and we have many specimens made of these metals but they were also skilled in carving wood and sometimes we have uh, specimens where wood has been covered with silver or gold plating and carved uh, very beautifully then they used to work in semi precious stones like lapis lazuli was a very favorite stones with them and also they used to work with beads and many other uh, uh, semi precious stones so uh, the entire range of uh, artifacts uh, discovered from uh, the mesopotamian civilization is very large and a large part of these artifacts have been discovered from the uh, uh, from the burial sites the tombs of kings and queens and uh, uh, we have found that uh, many uh, kings queens and high priests and priestesses were buried along with many uh, beautifully carved uh, ornaments and other types of uh, votive items ceremonial items and they were also buried with uh, various attendants who might have served them when they were alive and who might have either been sacrificed when they died or who might have killed themselves by drinking poison or by some other method because their master or mistress had died so now they were also buried with their master or mistress to serve them in the next world that seems to have been the belief so this is the context in which this art is found now i'll show you some specimens of this art so when we look at the mesopotamian artifacts bulls and rams are uh, two very popular animals which have been found in sculpture in paintings and uh, it seems that they were used for various purposes apart from uh, you being used for economic activities such as agriculture and rams for wools and milk Uh, uh of the cow and the uh, female ram it seems that they were also used as uh, votive objects as ceremonial ceremonial objects because they were uh, they might have been worshiped as sacred animals and uh, apart from that they were also used for food so both calf and uh, sheep might have been killed for food and uh, so there were uh, there were economic uh, uh, importance associated associated with them and there were also ceremonial uh, value associated with these animals so in this slide you can see this uh, 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 sculpture of bull on the one hand which is standing on a pedestal and it is made with bronze and it is inlaid with silver silver plating so you can see that uh, this uh, whitish patches these whitish patches are silver and the body of the ram uh, body of the bull is actually a bronze and it is standing on a pedestal which means that it might have been kept on an on a high place for ceremonial purpose and here you can see a bronze head of bull which is fixed to a pole like object so this is a, this again could have been a ceremonial object and uh, so this is a specimen of these are specimens of ceremonial usages of bull figures now um uh, the civilization of mesopotamia has uh, uh, thrown up a large um, Uh, assemblage of uh, musical instruments including lyre and uh, harps lyres are maximum in number and they are often uh, associated with boxes and their frame is made of wood and plated with gold and silver and uh, carved with uh, other types of uh, scenes and uh, it is said that the uh, strings of the lyre might have been either made with reeds or it it might have been made with 
young animals intestine parts which are very small uh, very thin and uh, uh, very flexible so when plucked on the uh, strings it made a sound now um, there is a, a tomb called the queen's tomb because the lady who is buried there her name is written as kuabi that is kuabi means word of my father and her title has been written as uh, nin so uh, nin can um, signify a queen or it can also signify a high priestess so uh, her queen her tomb uh, has thrown up parts of her mortal remains including uh, parts of skull and <clears throat> she is buried along she was buried along with many types of artifacts gold and silver all ornaments which were uh, intricately carved beads necklaces and also uh, many types of other votive items uh, ceremonial items and she uh, and several lyres have been found there so uh, this is the example of a lyre which has been found in this queen's tomb that is puabi's tomb and uh, this uh, lyre <coughs> is shaped in a part of the lyre is shaped in the form of a bull's body so earlier i as i said the bull served both as a ceremonial animal and also it, it had an economic importance so bull was a very important figure in mesopotamian civilization so this lyre's uh, lower part is shaped like a bull and the body is carved out of wood but it is covered with golden plates and lapis lazuli and the front of the bull's body is covered with panels which are painted and different scenes have been enameled by Uh, uh by um uh, semi precious stones so in its own days this was a very highly prized uh, object and most likely the lyre was uh, used by female musicians women musicians because in this tomb the bodies of some uh, a woman have been also found and one of them was Uh, this lyre was found lying uh, close to the body of a woman uh, the uh, skeletal remains of a woman so uh, by the type of finds which have been made uh, it is uh, interpreted that most likely lyres were played by women in a queen's entourage and when the queen died then either uh, these uh, women musicians were also killed and buried along with the queen or uh, uh, they killed themselves and they were buried along with the queen to serve her in the next life alternatively this uh, queen puabi uh, uh, might have been a high priestess and the music might have been ceremonial sung and played uh, musical instruments were might have been played uh, during the religious ceremony so uh, when the priestess was was offering the ceremonies these uh, female uh, musicians might have played the lyre and in the same tomb we also have a silver coated this is a gold coated lyre and we also have a silver coated lyre which is also shaped uh, like a bull and uh, the wood wooden body is covered by a silver plate which has been oxidized now and the front part of the body has different panels uh, 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 which are enameled with uh, semi precious stones so the style is the same only one is covered in gold uh, uh, plating and, and the other is covered in silver plating and this was uh, discovered in roughly 2500 bce so it is Uh, uh it is around 4500 years old and most likely uh, uh, these lyres were uh, played by women musicians either during ceremonies or uh, to entertain the queen
now uh, 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 there is a sculpture uh, made of gold uh, which which in, includes three uh, bone shaped figures the central figure is a uh, is a bull headed man and he is trying to control these two figures which are which flank him and these two figures are Uh, uh, mm, mm, combinations of male body with uh, bull face. So this looks like a do uh, like a uh, contest in which this looks like a contest in which uh, a bull headed man is trying to control two other bull shaped figures. So bull was very very important in those days and. Uh, there might have been bull fights uh, in which uh, uh, men used to participate also uh, to control bulls because bull was both economically and ceremonially very important now apart from the bull the rams were very important sheep were very important because sheep gave meal milk and uh, their wool was also used for uh, warm clothing and apart from that the sheep sheep also or ram also might have been used as a ceremonial figure during uh, religious rituals so uh, here uh, we have two figures of uh, uh, ram standing on their hind feet and uh, trying to climb uh, bushes or trees uh, low lying trees so these rams are made with wooden body and they are plated with gold and they are also covered with lapis lazuli to show their uh, woolen skin so the uh, gold uh, gold is used to cover the sheep's body and also the tree is covered with gold and the tree is covered with gold and you can see the the flowers and the leaves are uh, plated with gold while the face and the legs of the ram uh, are covered with gold while lapis lazuli has been used to carve the um, horns and also the uh, body the wool of the sheep so uh, because in the bible in the genesis we have a story where abraham went to sacrifice his son isaac and uh, they uh, instead he found a sheep caught in the uh, uh, thicket so he uh, uh, sacrificed the sheep that was uh, uh, caught in the thicket and not his son so because this story was very popular when uh, the excavation was done in early 20th century the excavator named this uh, pair of two Uh, sculptures as ram in a thicket but uh, uh, some there is some suggestion that if you look closely then it may not be the sculpture of rams but it may be the sculpture of goats because goats can also be carved in the same manner but the way it is carved and the way it is it, the pedestal you can see it is standing on a pedestal and this pedestal is uh, uh, paint uh, it is uh, carved with uh, uh, semi precious stones inlay it is inlaid with semi precious stones uh, so uh, this pedestal is also very important and the way the entire figure has been carved it looks like uh, not just a decorative figure but it it may have been used for some kind of ceremonial purpose and on the uh, head of on the upper part of the lamb's body ram's body you can see there is a pipe coming uh, out and which is also covered in gold so uh, there is a suggestion that both of these lambs might have formed a pair and they might have been connected by the uh, device of this pipe this the pipe uh, the stumps coming out of the body of the rams might have been connected by another shaft and on this shaft might have been placed a bowl of offering or uh, some other type of uh, like incense might have been burnt there 
so uh, most likely this looks like a uh, sculpture meant for ceremonial purpose and this is the other uh, piece of the pair um, uh, because there were two ram sculptures that were found and both are standing uh, on uh, standing on the hind legs and they are looking out to, to the thicket and there is this ram also has this stump of wood coming out and which is uh, plated with gold so uh, there is a suggestion that uh, this uh, stump of wood uh, might have been connected to the other pair and that shaft might have been used for votive offerings now uh, we have a box uh, which has a triangular type of shape with a wider base and narrower top and this box uh, is made of wood but it is enameled with shell and red limestone and lapis lazuli so there are uh, there are there are narrative panels carved on both sides of the box and these are called war and peace by the archaeologists because on one side is the uh, scenery of a war and on the other side is the scenery of a banquet so this is called the war panel because in the lower band of this panel uh, you can see uh, these chariots being drawn by horses they may be horses or they may be asses and you can see the riders uh, in the chariot and uh, there are some figures lying on the ground so they may have been enemies killed by the warriors in the chariot so uh, this looks like a war scene and on the um, central panel uh, there are two figures there is one uh, figure with a dragger drawn out and uh, they have uh, some prisoners held captive in the war so uh, there are these prisoners who are almost nude and they have been held captive and uh, there are some important looking figures with fallen bodies and then there is this figure which is drawing a dagger and then there are these figures who look like soldiers so it looks like if you read the narrative from bottom to top it looks like that in the top, bottom uh, is the scene of a war and the center the prisoners of the war have been brought by the soldiers and in the top you in the center you can see a very important figure uh, holding a um, standard and there are these uh, prisoners standing before him and behind him is the chariot in which he might have come and the driver of chariot and also his attendant soldiers so uh, this might have been the ruler or uh, an army commander and uh, after the war is won the prisoners have been captured then these same prisoners you see here they have been brought before the king or the army commander so this is the narrative of a uh, battle uh, which uh, which was fought and which was won so that's why this is called war panel and it is the entire scene is done in shell red limestone and lapis lazuli and the base but the body background is in wood and these materials have been used to inlay the scenes so you can see the in very intricate uh, carvings very intricate enamel work that has been done in this uh, panel and uh, when it was discovered the wood was actually fractured because of the weight of the soil uh, which had a lane there for more than 4500 years or so but uh, uh, with the wax um, they the archaeologists fill the gaps with wax and they recreated the uh, entire scene so this is a reconstruction uh, the it was not found in exactly the same uh, condition but it has been reconstructed to resemble uh, closely the uh, original work so this is called war panel and on the other side of the box is this scene which is called the peace panel because in this scene if you again read from bottom to top 
then in the center is a very important looking figure and on both sides of this figure there are uh, like uh, attendants carrying all types of luggage there are asses or uh, horses uh, asses maybe uh, 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 who are being used to uh, transport and these uh, figures are carrying all types of luggage maybe they are carrying sacks of grains or some other material now if you come to the central band here you see uh, uh, these important looking figures and then there are these sheep being carried or rams being carried and then horses horse riders and then attendants along with the horse riders if there is another horse rider and then on this side you see the three sheep being carried here you see a, a bull being carried and a bull being transported and there are attendants uh, on both sides of the scene so it seems that the food grains are being transported sheep are being transported and bull are being transported some for some kind of an event and when you see the uppermost band you understand what is this event because there are these six figures there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 so six very important looking figures who are seated with uh, uh, cups in their hand these cups may have contained wine or they may have contained some other liquid which was uh, some other kind of exotic drink and then there are attendants and there is a very important looking figures so uh, who he is also holding a cup in his hand so most likely this figure might have been the ruler and these might have been his uh, counselor or nobles or maybe army commanders and or maybe priests and then there uh, uh, so it looks like and here is a musician you can see uh, the musician is holding a lyre Uh, there are this this is a stringed instrument and uh, the musician is stringing the instrument so this is the scene of a banquet in which important looking people with king are sitting and having a banquet music is being played and, uh, and all these then all these uh, these two lower bands connect to the top band so this is some kind of a banquet that is being held so if you look at the narratives on both sides it looks like it is the narrative of a war that was fought and when the victory was won prisoners were fought and then a banquet banquet was uh, observed to say commemorate the victory of the war victory in the war so both scenes may be connected to each other and uh, this scene because it is uh, the narrative of a banquet it is called the peace panel but uh, if you connect both the sides of the box it looks like that one uh, side represents the war happening and the prisoners being caught and the other side uh, looks like the uh, banquet being held to uh, celebrate the victory in war now i showed you in the map of mesopotamia the city of uruk uh, which was one of the first cities to have come up in the civilization of sumer now uruk was the original name of the place and nowadays it is called warka warka is a derivative of uruk so uh, uruk has thrown up many archaeological uh, uh, specimens and there is a very intricately carved vase which has been found in a tomb uh, at uruk and uh, this vase uh, is uh, commonly known as warka vase that is vase which was found at warka warka is the same as uh, uruk so this warka vase uh, is made of alabaster and uh, it has uh, uh it is uh, it has uh, scenes again made in uh, carved in panels on its surface and these are uh, these scenes are carved in shallow 
uh, uh, in um, shallow uh, carving. These scenes are made with shallow carving. So again, we uh, read the narrative from bottom to top. It looks like that the narrative panels of Sumer civilization were uh, read from bottom to top. Although we may also come across narrative panels which may be read from top to bottom or from or some other direction. But today we have all the specimens that we have seen, they show the narratives from bottom to top. So here in the bottom, on the lower most panel, the it shows uh, water and then some flowers and also the wheat and barley uh, uh, crops. So it looks like that wheat and barley are being sown on the banks of a river. So uh, I told you that Sumer civilization grew up in the river on along the river banks of the rivers of Tigris and Euphrates. So uh, Euphrates. So uh, river representation of river and agriculture on the banks of river uh, uh, shows that this. Uh, uh, the society lived along the bank of a river and uh, right on top of that we see the bulls and rams again so these bulls and rams they may be represented as uh, uh, agricultural animals which which were used in uh, agriculture and they were also used for food so here their repre representation may be of their economic importance because right below uh, we have the representation of wheat and barley fields and then in the um, middle band we have these uh, men who are carrying uh, maybe baskets full of grain and food so uh, here you have the representation of agriculture of wheat and barley then we have the uh, representation of rams and bulls which are being used for food and in the middle band we have men carrying baskets of grains and other types of foods so this looks like a preparation of another banquet and when you go to the topmost layer you see uh, the staff belongs to inanna goddess uh, of war a goddess of war and prosperity and goddess of love. Inanna was a very important goddess and she had this uh, staff represents her uh, temple. And there is this priest-like figure and there are people carrying these baskets full of grains and fruits and other edible stuffs and they have brought it to the temple of Inanna. And in, on this, uh, in this figure you can also see the uh, goats and rams and bulls, the animals have been brought. Oh, and in here again, baskets full of grains have been brought. Hey, this is a uh, bull which has been brought. And here again, the same repetition is there. The grains have been brought. So, and these two are also baskets full of some type of food. So, uh, this vase represents the entire economy and ceremonial aspects of Sumerian life. In the lower panels, you have the wheat and barley being sown and grown along the banks of a river. And then you have uh, the men carrying the food and also uh, sheep and goat and bulls have been ca carrying, uh, carried for food. And in the uppermost can, uh, panel, you see that uh, all this is being carried to the temple of Inanna for some kind of ceremony and for some kind of offering to goddess Inanna. So this shows that goddess Inanna was worshipped with offerings of food, which included both fruits and vegetables and uh, grains. And it also included the meat, the, uh, the animals of... Uh, bulls and rams uh, who were offered to goddess Inanna, who might have been offered to goddess Inanna as part of the ritual ceremony dedicated to her. So uh, this is a very important vase which shows the 
economic and social and ceremonial life of uh, Sumerian society. And you can see that its date is very old. It is uh, dated to 3200 to 3000 BCE. So it is almost more than 5000 years uh, old. So uh, even uh, 5000 years ago, you can see the um, so economic activity in Sumerian society and the uh, carving and me method of carving and method of making utensils and uh, uh, carving scenes and uh, artisan work and metal work was so highly evolved. So, and this is from Uruk, which was one of the earliest cities, as I told you. So uh, this shows that uh, Sumerian society, even 4,500 to 5,000 years ago, was a highly developed society. And uh, they had trade relations with Indus Valley civilization, Egyptian civilization, and they also had trade relations with China. So uh, they had trade, they used to go for uh, sea trade and also for land trade. And in my previous videos, I had shown you the trade routes uh, along both the Eastern Sea Coast and Western Sea Coast, coast of India. And also I had shown you the uh, trade routes along the land, which covered all the civilizations in the ancient world. So Sumer participated in all these trade uh, routes and the cultural ideas, social ideas and economic ideas from Sumer uh, must have uh, definitely traveled from Sumer to other societies which existed in those days. So Sumer was not only a highly evolved society in its own region, but it was also, uh, uh, it also influenced the growth of civilization in other parts of the ancient world. So. Uh, these art forms not only show the uh, evolved state of art making in the Sumer society, but it, it, they also show what type of high uh, uh, achievements in civilization, economy, society, and religion they made, and how they might have influenced the other societies of their times. So in this video, I will uh, I will stop here and then in the next video I will show you more about the art feature art forms of other religion other uh, regions.